Welcome back. This is the Surface Duo 2 with Brett and Matt. Today we wanted to talk about uh, gestures, navigating the device, and also a feature called app pairs. So let's dive in here. Um, now, Matt, we spoke initially about some of the problems that we're having with the Surface Duo 2. You know, I mentioned the, the gesture navigation and getting around the device um, as a potential, I think, a bit of a problem. And I said that I'd switched away from the gesture-based navigation to the three-button navigation. Yesterday, I found that the problem that I was having with the, uh, the gesture navigation appeared somewhat in the three-button nav mode. So maybe it's a bit deeper really? than just, yeah, navigation. But anyway, um, the gesture nav, I think this is an Android default thing, right? That um, there's sort of these, this, this push to move away from the button navigation that was always there. Remember those early Android phones? They had a back button, physical one on them. Yes. If that might have been a touch button, it was sort of physically at the bottom of the screen. They had a home button yeah, uh, and a button to bring up all of the apps that were running. So um, there's a move away from that to more gesture-based navigation. And what are the gestures on the uh, Surface Duo 2? Can you remember what they are? I can, I, I'm not using yes, them. Yes. So, so we, I mean, swipe down from the top uh, brings up our, our settings pane yep. or our notifications, notifications pane. Notifications and settings down there. Quick yep. access, quick access to settings. Yep. Um, from the left, if you've, if you've got it open from the left or from the right, we're actually swiping back. It's a back function. Yeah, that's um, right. And it depends on which side of the screen you're using, right? So if you're on the left side, yes. the left side swipe in from the left will be the back button. And if you're on the right side, right. swipe in from the right will be the back button. Is that right? I must say I found that a bit tri tricky to remember because I try this try, yeah. trying to swipe from the middle of the screen where you're touching the other screen can be a bit difficult because I tend to hold it in just a yeah. very slight bend mode all the time. Yeah, yeah. Like um, but you don't need to do that. It's from the edges. And up from the bottom, right, gets me to uh, my apps. And probably this is one of the bugs I or things I don't like about the gesture navigation is I've got OneNote here in dual screen mode. And I want to hide it and get to my apps. And you can normally just swipe it and drop it in the middle. Yeah. If it was a single screen app and it would just disappear and I would see everything. But because I'm in dual screen mode, yeah. it drops it back to one screen. So now I've got to do it a second time to get to my nav mode yeah. where I want to see yeah. my other apps. Yeah. So that's I don't know how they fix that, but it's yeah. Yeah. Yes. Up up from the bottom to manage apps, down from the top to get the settings and quick access, and left and right for back. And that might be fixed in the upcoming Android 12L that they've been talking about, which is a, a version of Android or a fork of Android that's specifically designed for two screen devices. I think those sorts of issues, you know, it, it's not perfectly smooth, you know, operating a device that's basically, you know, can double itself um, in Android, but it, it'll come uh, and it is usable. It's just a matter of, you know, getting around some of the quirks it's, sometimes. It's just a little thought in the top of my head, right? You just mentioned a fork in the Android, you know, yeah. nav, uh, uh, system. Yeah. It, isn't this, you know, we have this system. It's a bit like the phone journey, right? From big to small to big. Yeah. Uh, here we've gone from operating systems. Everyone's gone, oh, we need one operating system to be on every device. Yes. Uh, and and then all of a sudden we've got Android, which is now going to fork for multiple screen devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that, that ends up. And, yeah, fragmentation, all that sort of stuff that people talk about. Um, at the end of the day, who cares? I just want a device that can be productive and do what I need it to do, right? <laughs> I just want yeah. it to do it smoothly. Um, the, uh, so, so that's part of it. So there is also, um, there's a sort of a horizontal line underneath an app if it's sitting on one screen that you can grab and drag grab, into yep. the middle to make it span the app. Um, it's pretty easy to do that. It's pretty easy to use. The one that I always found a bit difficult was to bring up the app list with the gesture mode. So being able to see a list of apps that are running in the background. So um, it's kind of a very specific swipe gesture that you have to do to bring up that list of running apps. It's, yeah, yeah, it's from off the glass to on the glass as we talk about it when we talk about using touch. There's kind Whereas of a speed can... associated with it though, right? You've got to, got to yeah. do it at the right speed. Yeah, exactly. And I think from memory, you can adjust the sensitivity of that. And of course, with your home screens as well, you've got multiple home screen options. You can have as many home screens as you like. I'm not sure if there's a limit as to how many. Uh, yeah. And, and navigating side to side uh, on those, dragging them left and right is, is pretty straightforward. Are you using the glance screen much? Are you using that? Yeah, I do use the gla gla glance screen. I have that um, customized so that I can see my, my calendar first thing at the top. I then want to see my task list and then my sticky notes underneath that. So I've, I've really customized that glance screen. I got rid of the news feed because I don't really want that on my phone. It's just a distraction. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I do use that. So if you just swipe to the left from the, the first home screen, you'll, you'll bring up that glance screen. And it's really handy just to be able to see what am I doing today? What's in the calendar? 
Um, you yep. can also customize whose calendars show up there. So by default, like when I sign in, it shows me all of my team's calendars, which is a little bit annoying because I get freaked out and think I've got a meeting coming up. It's not mine. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I, you do have to customize that and make sure it's working right for you. But um, yeah, really handy to have that glance screen there. And like you say, to be able to categorize things up onto those home screens is great. And the really cool thing I like about the Microsoft Launcher and why I've been using it on my Android phones for years is because with the full apps list, right? So on Android, you have home screens and then you pull up the full apps list. Um, with Launcher, you can actually customize it to show you that apps list in alphabetical order and broken down. So you've got them grouped by, yeah. by letter, um, which if you're ever hunting for apps, um, you might not know what the name is, so you can't search for it. Um, it's it's really handy to be able to see that categorized and broken down. In order. Yeah, in order. So yeah. really like that about the Microsoft Launcher, and that works really well. So And the other thing we love on the Duo with regards to Launcher is app pairs, being able to open two apps right. at once and have them populate both sides of your Duo. Now, I'm using this quite a lot. So how, um, did, you, how did you make an app pair again? You grab one app from the home screen and you drag it onto... On top on top of another on top app. of the other one yeah right yeah kind of like you're going to do it's a folder strong. but instead of being exactly the folder it actually groups the two apps together and it pops up on screen and says you know which app goes on which side basically and i'm going to create an app pair and then when you click yeah. on that new icon that gets created it launches the two apps at the same time across the two screens right yeah so i've done this with OneNote and the internet you might be, i often read articles on the web and you want to just take notes on them or you want to clip them to OneNote. So that, I find that very handy. Uh, um, Outlook. Outlook and Calendar. Yep. Yep. I've done the same. I've, Teams yep. and OneNote. And also. For me is another one. Outlook and, and your task list too, maybe. Yep. Teams and OneNote. Yep, to do, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. They're all good, good, um, good app pairs. Um, I've found that I'm just a bit like this is just one of those things. It's a change of behavior and you need to constantly remind yourself to go back and do it because I just forget these things are there and I tend to just manually open launch them individually. Down. Hey? Yeah. Yeah, just open them and then yeah. yeah, put them on the screens you want and keep going. Yeah, yeah. So um it's just one of those handy tools that you got to to just remind yourself that it's there and and give it a go. So those app pairs I think are really handy with this as well. Um and I think I mentioned in a previous video but um it is also possible to specify that certain apps get launched as full screen apps. So that's perhaps another settings worth mentioning in this video. Uh, if you do go into the settings app, there's a special section there just for uh, settings related to the Surface Duo. Um, and you can scroll through a list of your apps there and just toggle on that they launch full screen. So for example, when I launch OneNote, I want that to open full screen usually. Full screen. So I have that set by default to launch full screen. I suspect that having an app pair will override that behavior and automatically launch it on its own screen, but you might need to test that out and make sure it works. So if you're using the Surface Duo 2 or the Surface Duo 1, do you use app pairs? Are they helpful? Tell us about it in the comments below. Uh, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you want to learn more about the Surface Duo 2 or any other Surface device. In fact, a lot more about Microsoft uh, products as well. So uh, join us and we'll see you next week.